fast 18 Jahre unschuldig in der Todeszelle. Juan Melendez wurde 1984 zu Unrecht zum Tode verurteilt und verbrachte fast 18 Jahre in einer Todeszelle in Florida. Herr Melendez, wie kam es dazu, dass Sie überhaupt eingesperrt wurden? Uh, all I can tell you that my case is not that all unique. I'm the number 99 person in the nation to be a senator and released from, from their row. It has been a hundred, a 1,229 people already executed, and only God know how many of them they had the luck that I had. My case was based on the testimony of two questionable witnesses, no physical evidence against me. One said that I confessed a crime to him. This, It was a police informant that said that. He implicates a friend of mine. He gets threatened with the electric chair. And, and, and he, uh, he, he incriminated himself in the crime. And basically what he said, he picked me up, took me to the scene of the crime, dropped me off. Came an hour and a half later, picked me up again, took me home. Don't know what happened to after it happened. That's entire evidence against me. No physical evidence against me. There's the testimony of two questionable witnesses with a criminal record from coast to coast. Warum konnte Ihr Anwalt Sie nicht richtig verteidigen, beziehungsweise warum kam es überhaupt dazu, dass Ihr Anwalt das offensichtlich schon vorhandene Geständnis des realen Mörders nicht vorbrachte als Beweis? That's, that's a question that, that I sincerely can tell you. Uh, I've been trying to find that answer myself. Uh, uh, all I can say uh, to me is I think it was overconfidence. The case didn't have that much evidence from the beginning, and I think he, couldn't, he was overconfidence. And I think he, he, he told he had, not, he had not to work so hard to win this case. And that's the only conclusion I can come up. And with lawyers in the United States, they, they're not well paid to defend you. Some of them, I'm not, not, not going to say he was incompetent, because I think he was, he was probably was probably one of the best lawyers in, in there, in, in that county. Uh, like I said, probably he was over, over, over confidence. He thought he couldn't, didn't have to work that hard to get it. He was, he was not paid well. I believe that. And... And that's a question that, that really you got to get him and, and he got the one that you got to answer that question. Was war das Schlimmste, was Ihnen im Gefängnis zugestoßen ist? The worst thing for, for me and Devro was when they execute someone. I'm in this cell, next to me is another person in another cell that I know for 10 or 15 years. He cries on my shoulder, I cries on him. He shared with me his intimate thoughts, I share mine with him. I learned to grow up to love him. And one day they snatch him out of that cell, and I know what's going to happen. They're going to kill him, and I cannot stop it. My time is the electric chair, and they got to generate the chair with electricity because it's 2010 volts that got to go through his body to get him killed. And I still hear this sound, mm, 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 that stay in my mind. And, and, the, and, 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 and some of them, and I know precisely, the time when they burned the life out of him because the lights go on and off and I still can stop it. But the most trouble, trouble part for me is, is, is that I know that, that some of them are innocent, like Jesse Tefaro, Benny Dems, Leo Jones, Pedro Medina, and a homeboy of mine from Puerto Rico that the state of Florida, before trial, offered him five years on a plea bargain. He did not took it, obviously, because he did not commit the crime. And it cost him his life, and he never did. And all I can say is, I'll see you soon. My case was upheld, upheld three times in the Florida Supreme Court. 16 years after me being in death row, they finally take confession of the real killer. Uh, and that opened the case wide open. They start investigating. Uh, the case fails in the hands of a, a brave woman, a, a judge, a female judge by the name Honorable Barbara Fletcher. After she hear the take confession of the real killer, she demand, made a court order and demand the prosecutor to send every documents, any files of my case, any notes. 
And uh, he did so. It was found out to her, that, to him, that she, he also had a transcript, a copy of the Tate Confession. But he had something else too. He had 16 documents that corroborated the Tate Confession of the real killer, 16 documents that he never turned in to trial defense lawyer at the time of the trial. What creates in the legal world in, in the States, they call it the Brady Rule Valencia. We'll hold them exculpatory evidence, evidence that, do, that indicate that you did not commit the crime. But they call it a Brady Rule violation. And by that time, I already had three eventuality hearings, and I was able to establish more than 20 witnesses that, that also corroborated the take confession of the real killer. So when Honorable Barbara Fletcher had all this ammunition, she decided to write a 72-page opinion on it. In that 72 page opinion, she chastised the prosecutor for the way he handled the case. She chastised law enforcement office for the way they investigated the case. And she chastised, in some way, my trial defense attorney for the way he handled my case. And she ordered a new trial, grant me a new trial. And she let him know in that 72 page opinion that the case was terrible damage. You have, a, you have everything in the case, you have an innocent man in that role. She decided to grant me a new trial or, 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 or order a new trial. And the state prosecutor, the one that prosecuted me, decided not to process the case, drop the case, dismiss the case. And that's why I'm here right now doing this interview with you. Sie möchten nun das alles hinter sich lassen, obwohl Sie darüber sprechen in Vorträgen, um in der Zukunft solche unschuldigen Verurteilungen und Hinrichtungen zu vermeiden. Welches ist Ihre Botschaft? My message to the world, especially when I come to Europe in a, in a nice place like, like, like the country of Austria, is to, 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 for them to, to get involved. The uh, United States need to know that, that the death penalty is racist. The United States need to know that the, that the death penalty do not deter crime. The United States need to know that, it, that the death penalty costs too much. The United States need to know that, it, that the death penalty is cruel and unnecessary. We got alternatives. But the most important thing that the United States need to know, and I think is the duty of Europe and the, and the countries that do not have the death penalty, to teach the United States this, this message, that any nation, any country that have the death penalty, it always will be a risk to execute an innocent one. And you always can release an innocent man from prison. We don't have no problems with that. But you can never, and I repeat, you can never release an innocent man from the grave. And that's like we got rid of segregation. And that's like we got rid of slavery. Black, white, and brown together in harmony. In harmony, we can get rid of the death penalty. And we need the international Uh, Preso, the international support to get rid of the death penalty, not only in the United States, in the rest of the world.